Nancy New here, Director of Sports Performance at the Strength House in Worcester, Massachusetts. For this 5-Minute Friday, Episode 1, I want to discuss four tips for designing a stronger team warm-up. So let's get into it. Number one, I think the main objective of any warm-up is to increase the heart rate. If you can increase the the heart rate, you're going to have tons of benefits coming from the body, which I think is going to translate well over to the actions and the movements that have to be done in the game. So oftentimes, um, I feel like teenagers mistake the warm-up as being a time to socialize and get in and out of static positions. And by static positions, I mean positions where they're sitting, they're not moving, they're stretching and holding stretches for like 30 seconds. Uh, Not necessarily to say that that is a bad thing to do, but I don't think that 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 is the most effective and efficient way to warm our body up to get prepared to do one of the fastest motions in sport. Um, When we get the heart rate up, you see tons of benefits from the body. So you're going to see improved contractibility. Um, That just means that the muscles are going to fire a little bit faster, right? The the bat's going to go through the zone a little bit faster. Uh, These kids are going to have a little bit better coordination, uh, whether that's fielding a ground ball a little bit more smoothly. They're going to have faster perception times. Maybe that's seeing the ball off the bat. Um, all those things come into play, especially when it comes to winning ball games. Um, if you need an example of a, a solid warm-up that increases a heart rate, uh, if you just visit my webpage and you can go ahead and give yourself um, a free high school warm-up. It's right there on my homepage. Uh, tip number two. You need to get these athletes up and moving. So you don't want them to spend too much time on the ground. If you go ahead and you look at a softball player, um, especially a youth soft player with no experience uh, when it comes to strength training or movement, anything like that, you're going to find yourself or find these athletes that live in what's called the gross extension pattern. So if you look at this photo here to the right, um, I had the softball player just lifting her arms up overhead. And you see how she has like this pretty big like arc in her lower back? That's just telling me that she has a poor core control. She has a hard time keeping her rib cage in line with her pelvis. So if you need a better idea of what like owning your center of gravity looks like, you can go ahead and click this dead bug video. um, And I'll give you, it's going to take you right to a link that shows you what owning your center of gravity should look like. For the remaining of my warm-up, I'm getting them up and moving. Um, We are doing a lot of single leg stuff. We're doing a lot of arms overhead stuff, single leg balance, uh, just because the main objective is to get that heart rate up. We're doing various uh, mirror sprints, and once you do that, I think you're, you're going down the right path of getting their heart rate to increase. Um, if you need a good example of why you should tend or, t- or tend to stray away from static stretching. You can go ahead and read one of my blog posts that I wrote back. Uh, Fast Pitch Friday, episode 17, should softball players stretch their shoulders. Tip number three, I think giving your players a short band routine is crucial. So I would say that a lot of players do band routines, but less than 1% of them set themselves up in the correct position to actually accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. So if an athlete is going through a band routine and they're using, say, like a super thick band, right, I don't I don't think that's going to benefit them as much, right? They have really good intentions to do something good, but at the end of the day, the band is going to be, especially like the J bands, they're just too thick and they're going to pull players out of positions. They're going to pull them into that gross extension pattern in order to do those movements. So... I'm going to go ahead and recommend like a thin band, like like one-fourth. It's got to be something really light that players can control while keeping the humerus in line uh, with their glenoid, right? It's not going to glide forward. They're not going to arch through the lower back. Um, and when doing these band routines, like take a close look at what their rib cage and their pelvis is doing. As they're like doing their external rotations, is their rib cage, is their rib cage separating from their pelvis or are they doing a good job in owning that core control? Okay. If you need to watch a sample band routine and the, and the mistakes that I commonly see, you can go ahead and click that link below and I discuss some common flaws that I see in many band routines. Number four, go ahead. You need to have the ability to recognize the hypermobile athletes from the stiff. 
I'm going to say overall the female population tends to be more on the hypermobile, right? They, ha they tend to have more joint hypermobility. If you go ahead and look at girls just standing, these girls tend to stand out in knee hyperextension. They kind of lean to the right a little bit more often. They have a lot of elbow hyperextension. And hyperextension or hypermobility really helps players and athletes like throw a ball a lot faster. And it's your job just to create a warm-up that doesn't pull them more into that into that um, hypermobility. It'll, you're trying to challenge them to be a little bit more stable and own their range of motion. So that's why I have emphasized stability. So in my warm-up, I'm doing various plank variations. I'm doing various like high knee marches where it's requiring them to get good, you know, uh, good hip extension, holding those. We're doing s some single leg work and... Uh, athletes who tend to be a little bit more hyper mobile, you can have them do an exercise, right? And they can look perfect, but they're not feeling it in the right spots. So you want to make sure that if you're having them do a dead bug, that they're actually feeling it in their core and not their low back. So asking your athletes where they feel it. Um, and you can help players own positions and own core control via tempo. Tempo is just going ahead and if they're doing a dead bug and separating, they're just separating for three seconds. So arms going away from their leg for one, two, three, and then coming back to the middle. Those are just tempos. Or you can have them extend and get long and then hold that position for a certain amount of breaths. All right, so that was my five-minute Friday. Those are my four tips to help you build a better, more efficient team warm-up. If you have any questions or if you didn't understand something that I was talking about today, you can go ahead and just email me. And we can hop on the phone for 15 minutes and just talk about how to build a stronger warm-up. Um, I hope you enjoyed this 5-Minute Friday.